for joining us for our series of webcasts for 2014 with the North American Retail Hardware Association. We're looking forward to a lot of our topics this year. In one of our webcasts, we'll be talking about Amazon and taking an in-depth look at the company. And in another, we're going to talk about some challenges in succession planning and the steps you need to make sure you take before you retire. In December, we'll talk about Market Measure, the industry's annual report. But we're going to start the year off this morning on merchandising and some tips and tricks, just easy, quick changes you can make in your store to help boost your sales. My name is Liz Lichtenberger, and I'm an editor with Hardware Retailing Magazine. If you have any questions about the webcast, please feel free to contact me at lichtenberger at nrha.org. As always, we'd like to start by thanking our webcast sponsors, the North American Retail Hardware Association, Hardware Retailing, and NRHA's Vendor Partner Program, vendors who are supporting the independent sector. Today we'll be talking about the four F's of merchandising, discussing some before and after photos, and talking about some quick and easy tips, just changes you can make in your store. We have also teamed with retailer Will Barnhart from Wilco in Oregon. Will is the NRHA past president of the board of directors and he's spent many years studying merchandising and has um, traveled to hardware stores around the country. He's taken a lot of photos and has a lot of good ideas that he's shared, he's shared with us. First, let's start talking about um, what merchandising is. Theoretically, you know what it is, but if you want to define it, you can say it's anything you do in your store to display and promote the merchandise in the store. It's a pretty broad definition, but it covers anything from signage to end caps to showing off a seasonal display. Let's get started by talking about the four F's of merchandising. The first is filling the shelves. You want to always make sure the shelves are fully stocked. The second is fronting. You want to make sure that all of the products are moved to the front of the shelf. The third is facing. Make sure that all of your products are forward facing on the shelves so customers can clearly read the labels. The fourth F is frequent, and that's just to remind you to frequently focus on the filling, fronting, and facing of your products. It's stuff that you can do and your employees can do throughout the day just as you're walking through your store. Maybe you're taking a customer over to another aisle to show them what they're looking for, or you're walking to the back room or the office, or perhaps you're going up front to the cash register to answer the phone. No matter where you're headed, you can just do these little things, just fix a box on a shelf, or move a can, whatever it may be. You can do it just as you're walking through your store. It's something you and your employees can be working on constantly. All right, now that we've covered the four Fs, let's look at a few before and after photos. The first tip we have for you is to fully stock your shelves. And you can see in this before photo that these, this shelf has a lot of empty space showing. Not only is it a less attractive display for the customer, but it doesn't give them a boost of, necessarily give them a boost of confidence that you're going to have the product they're looking for just because there's so much that's missing here. You want to make sure that your shelves are fully filled and that they're neatly organized. If you look at this after photo, you can see that these are just that. There's a lot of color, which is good because color helps sell and everything's neatly organized and fully stocked. The customer can find whatever they need. If they can find it, they'll still think you may have it and they'll be more willing, more likely to go and find an employee and ask for something else they're looking for. If you don't have the product they need in the store, you can always offer to get it shipped in from the warehouse or you may be able to offer them a similar product instead. The next tip we have for you is to clearly label your displays. As you'll see here in this before photo, there's a display that's neatly set up, but it has no price or signage. You know it's a, set, a display of paper towels, but you have no idea how much they cost. If you look at the after photo, though, you can see that the signage has been put up at the top and the customer can see the price. You want to be able to label everything clearly so the customer can look at the product, look at the display, and not have any questions. They know what it is, what it's for, and what the price is. Our next tip is to maximize space in your store. As you see, this first shelf is fully stocked and it's neatly labeled, but there is plenty of empty space. There are only four shelves and you can see plenty of pegboard between them. A better step would be to fill out the shelves. As you look in the after photo, you can see there are eight, eight shelves and they are fully filled. This is a display that Will rearranged and he actually told us that it's all the same amount of product, the same number of product. He just arranged it to make the shelf look fuller. It, the display looks a little bit more attractive and fuller because the, of the way the products have been rearranged. Again, these are all tips that you can do. It's quick and easy to change. You just have to move a few things around, add a little bit of signage. It's just something that it doesn't take you more than a few minutes here and there, and it makes a big difference. Another tip we have for you is to add a seasonal theme. As you see in this display of rakes, 
it, you can see plenty of pegboard and while everybody knows what a rake is for and you know when it'll be a big seller in your store, the display is just kind of there. If you add in, you can look at the after picture, you can see that burlap's been added to the back to cover the pegboard and some leaves and pumpkins have been added in as well to really add a fall theme. It's just an extra step you can take to make a display look a little more attractive and draw in the customer's eye as they walk by. This is something you can do at any time of year if you want to try it in spring or another season as well. Also consider using products from other departments. As you look at this display, the things that the probably jumps out most is the horse head because that's not something you see on every shelf in a store. That's not what's actually being sold in this display, but it draws the customer in and makes them come over to look at the related products. It's a good way to bring the customer in and show them something that otherwise they may just walk right by. A working display does something similar. As you can see in this display of chainsaws, they're all stuck together in a log side by side and they're all neatly labeled with price and information. While your customers know what a chainsaw does, actually seeing them in action really just draws their eye in and makes them want to stop and learn more. It's also a good way for your employees to talk to customers about the different models and explain the differences between each. Let's talk about how-to displays. With the internet, customers can find just about everything they need on their smartphone. However, looking on your phone or trying to show your phone to an employee, that's a lot different than actually having a life-size display right there in your store. If a customer wants to learn how plumbing fits together, for example, they'd have to pull it up on their phone and then try to find the products on the shelves that match the products that they're reading about on the internet. However, if you have a life-size display and you bring an employee over to talk about it, it's a good way for the two of them to discuss and point to the different, the different products and the different steps involved in the project. The employee can then take the customer one aisle over and show them exactly all the products they'll need. If there are any questions, it's a lot easier to explain it by pointing at a display than by looking at a smartphone or drawing a diagram. It's especially helpful when you have projects that can get a little complicated with a lot of steps. It gives customers more confidence in their products if they can see step by step, full size, what they need to do. The internet can do a lot, but one thing it does not offer is human interaction and just you know the face-to-face -face component that you can get at the store. So by using this display, you're really capitalizing on what you can offer in your store that the internet can't offer. Let's talk a little about this display of paint thinners and how you can give it a new look. Will Barnhart has told us that he can spend as little as two minutes completely reworking a display. He went through several steps to change this display and he said it took him even less, than that, less time than that. In the first display, you can see there are big gaps in the shelving, a lot of empty space, items are moved around, they're in the wrong place, it's just, it's disorganized and it's unappealing. But in the next spot, step, you can see that Will has already started to make some changes. While it's not perfectly in order yet, it has been reorganized a little and it gives the customer a little bit easier time trying to find exactly what they need. In this next photo, you'll see that he has fully organized the display. All products are forward facing and they're organized from smallest to largest, with the smallest being on the top shelves and the largest being on the bottom. They're organized by color and product type, and it's easy for the customer to go and look and find exactly what product and what size they need. The labels are facing forward, and everything's at the front of the shelves, and it's easy to see. Plus, there's a good amount of space on the top shelf. Here's another view of this same photo. You can see even more space on the top. Will said there was more than 50% space left over when he finished reorganizing the shelf, which offers a lot of room for you to bring more products out of your back room and stock them on your shelves. You could easily fill out this top shelf, and there's probably even enough pegboard at the top you could add a whole new shelf of product. As you can see, most of these changes are quick and easy and only take a few minutes at a time. If you can rework a display in two minutes, think how much you could do in 10 minutes or 30 minutes. You can also talk to your employees and make sure that they work on it throughout the day. And together, that time adds up by even the end of a shift with a few employees working here and there. You could have reworked many of the displays in your store and bring, brought the overall appearance of your store to the next level. Thank you for taking the time to view this webcast. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to contact me at lllichtenberger at nrha.org. We'll be doing some more stories about merchandising and offering more tips throughout the year in hardware retailing, so keep an eye on future issues of our magazine. Also, feel free to check out hardwareretailing.com, our magazine's website, where you can read the latest news, hear what industry experts have to say, and view online, the online version of our magazine. Thanks again for watching.